Hello, my name is Dr. Yaga Sisoko. Today we are going to talk about Chapter 15, Price Discrimination. So by charging higher prices to different customers, a monopoly firm can increase its profit. So what is price discrimination? It is business practice that sells the same good at different prices to different customers. For instance, you know, movie theater will charge different prices to different customers. If you come, you know, in the morning, matinee, you pay less, you pay at the discounted price. If you come in the afternoon, you pay a little bit higher price. If you come at prime time from 6, 6, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. to to midnight, you pay, you know, so premium prices. So also, they have the movie theater do price distribution for, you know, so they provide discount to, you know, so senior citizen. The, the same practice also is done by airline, you know, company. They have a, a price discrimination. So if you want to sit in the economy class, you pay less. If you want to go to, you know, um, first class, you pay more. Even if you want to sit, uh, you know, so by the exit, then you pay more. Those sit have leg room, or uh, if sometimes if you wanna sit, uh, if you wanna sit uh, on the uh, this by the aisle, then well you can get up, you know, and quickly and sit. So you pay more also by sitting by the aisle. So also those are price discrimination that uh, airline, you know, company would do. So it's a rational strategy to increase profit by monopoly, but this will require the ability to separate customers according to the willingness to pay. So, so this can raise economic welfare in us in the society. So perfect price discrimination, the monopoly will charge each customer a different price exactly is or her willingness to pay to pay the monopoly firm in the, in the case of perfect price discrimination will get the entire surplus the entire profit here and in this case there is no dead one loss so with have the price discrimination the monopoly will, will charge a single price which is higher than the marginal cost the consumer surplus will be smaller the producer surplus will be uh, bigger, the profit to the monopoly, and this will lead to dead one loss, you know, so a portion of, uh, you know, so of uh, consumer surplus will be lost to, to, to the society. So, you know, the dead one loss will, will reduce the economic well-being in that case. So another exam other example of price discrimination are discount coupon people will get discount coupon and manufacturing coupon and then go grocery shopping to to get to pay lower prices you know so another example would be financial aid to students going to college they will pay less tuition you know when they receive financial assistance so so you know that those are examples of you know so uh, price discrimination Figure nine deal with uh, welfare and with and without uh, price discrimination. Panel A talk about monopoly with single price discrimination. When a monopoly is is charging a single price, so the the monopoly price here is greater than the marginal cost. So so then. Uh, the, the monopoly profit will be this area, okay? So the consumer surplus will be this area. And then uh, th this will lead to a dead wall loss. So that triangle will be the dead wall loss so because, uh, you know, so the monopoly price here is greater than the marginal, the marginal cost.
So monop panel B monopoly is monopolistic with uh, perf uh, perfect price discrimination. So in the, the price charged by the monopoly is exactly equal to the marginal cost. So, so all the triangle here represent the monopoly profit. So consumer surplus will be zero. So producer surplus will be all the profit to the monopoly. So in the, there is no deadwall loss. So, so you can see that uh, you know, so you know, so because of consumer surplus equal to zero, total surplus now equal to the film profit. Comparing these two panels, we can see that the perfect price discrimination raised profit, raised total surplus, and lower consumer surplus. So example of price discrimination are movie ticket. So the movie theater, you know, lower prices for children and senior citizen. So in 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 this case, uh, you know, so if a, if a movie theater have a local monopoly power, and if children and senior citizen have a lower willingness to pay for a ticket, in this case, the movie theater raise their profit by price discriminating. Another example also are airline prices. Airline company you know, charge lower prices for round trip, you know, with Saturday night stay. Why? Because uh, you know, so you know, this rule provide a way to separate to separate business traveler and leisure traveler. A passenger who is in a business trip has a high willingness to pay. And most likely does not want to stay overnight, you know, on Saturday night. So by contrast, a passenger traveling for personal reason has a lower willingness to pay and is more likely to be willing to stay over a Saturday night. Therefore, the airline can, you know, successfully price discriminate by charging lower, you know, prices for passenger who say over a Saturday night. You can see that uh, this passenger here is telling to the, the other one here, would, would it bother you to hear how little I pay for this flight? Basically, this might mean that this, this passenger might be, you know, a leisure traveler. It doesn't mind saying, you know, so over night, you know, so on Saturday, you know, so. So other example of price discrimination are discount coupon. Not all customers are willing to spend time to click coupon. You know, for instance, you know, so a busy simply buyer has as to clip the coupon to get 50 cents of of a uh, next purchase so so a rich and business is it unlikely to do to spend a time clipping discount coupon out of out of the newspaper and she's probably willing to pay higher prices for many goods a person who is unemployed on the other hand is more likely to clip coupon and to have a lower willingness to pay. Therefore, by charging a lower price only to those customers who, who clipped coupon, firm can successfully price discriminate. So another example also of a price discrimination would be financial aid. So I, so I tuition and needed based financial assistance to students, to student, you know, so, you know, so in this case, many colleges and universities gave financial aid to needed students. One can view this policy as a type of price discrimination. Wealthy students who have greater financial resources and therefore they have a higher willingness to pay for or to go to college. So then, so by charging and high tuition and selectively offering financial as aid to you know, to you know so school in fair 
charge prices to customer based on the value they place on going to that school. This behavior is similar to that of any price discriminating monopoly. Another example is quantity you know, discount. So customer pay you know so a higher prices to for the first unit board than for the last unit board. For instance, a bakery might charge 50 cents for each donut, but five dollars for a dozen. This, this, so this is a form of price discrimination because the customer pay a higher prices for the first unit board than for the twelfth one. Quantity discount are often a successful way of price discrimination because a customer is willing to pay an additional unit decline you know, as the customer buy more units.